Driven by curiosity and recklessness, Emily had come to an ancient abandoned temple. A chill ran down her spine as she felt a presence in the air. However, she didn't back down. As she explored the dark and dusty interior, a mist rose from the floor, and the candles flickered in connivance with the hidden creature. Then she saw it. It was Zhang Shi, with its pale skin and misshapen face, leaping towards her with inhuman grace. Emily's heart stopped. Her legs trembled, but the paralysis of terror held her in place. She recited words of protection under her breath, but her trembling lips barely made a sound. That bang was getting closer, its jumps resounded in the temple. Emily closed her eyes, expecting the worst. Suddenly, a silence invaded the place. Although her eyelids continued to exert force, she felt that the Jiang Shi had disappeared. Heart pounded in her ear, she opened her eyes to find herself alone in the gloom of the temple. She was still terrified, but a feeling of gratitude and relief washed over her. The Jiang Shi are a vampire-like creature in China. Its translation would be rigid corpse, and it relates to the people who died and whose soul didn't find rest. Either because they didn't receive a proper burial, or because they died in tragic circumstances. It's someone dead, halfway between being a zombie and a vampire. They are dressed as King Dynasty morticians. They are corpses, their skin is very white, with some green tinge, and their appearance can vary from not too bad looking, as in the case of a recently deceased person, to a very advanced state of decomposition. Their white hair and nails don't stop growing, so they are very long. They don't support the contact of the sun, it is said that this accelerates their decomposition and for this reason they have been linked to vampirism, because they only appear at night. One of its main characteristics is the way they move, because they do it by jumping. Due to rigor mortis, their limbs became totally rigid and they cannot straighten or bend them. By biting a person, they turn them into another living dead. Unlike the vampires we know, the Jiangxi don't suck blood. They roam the world of the living, looking for vital energy. The key of people to sustain themselves. They have supernatural powers. They can bring someone back to life, and even more terrifying, they can possess someone through their spirit. Those who believe in the existence of this creature are sure that they return to take revenge for not having a sacred burial, or to be buried along with their relatives if they have lost their lives far from home. In traditional Chinese villages, a funeral ritual could be contracted to bring the dead home, when they had died far away. It was performed by Taoist priests, who revived the corpse and taught it to jump to its hometown. The monks traveled at night and rang bells to notify the inhabitants of the passing villages, as it was considered bad luck for a living person to see a Jiangxi. This service was expensive, and not everyone could afford it. Taoist monks can control them, or stop them, with spells. But there are also popular methods to keep them away, such as leaving handfuls of rice on the roads. In this way, the Jiangxi are distracted and count the grains. Other ways are Placing a board 15 cm high to prevent them from entering houses with their jumps. Using chicken eggs, which are capable of repelling them. Mirrors, because they get a scare when they see the reflection or stick a piece of paper on the foreheads with a spell written vertically. But where does this creature originate? Some may think that they originated as a result of evil forces or the devil himself. However, it is said that its legend is more than 2,000 years old and it was passed on through people's word of mouth. At that time, Emperor King Shi Wang was about to conquer and unify China. His goal was to unite all the states and create a single, very powerful nation. During the wars that broke out during their conquest, many people were sent to the borders of each state to stop the invasions. Some of them traveled very far and died a great distance from their homes. Given the circumstances, returning the bodies to their homes was very complicated. So most of the time they were left where they died or, at most, buried near the battle zone. 
The families of the deceased had a very difficult time when they were told the news, knowing that their loved one wasn't going to have a sacred burial, and that they wouldn't rest in peace. For this reason, they were compensated with these funeral rituals performed by Taoist priests. To transport the rigid corpse, the priests tied it to bamboo poles and carried them, but the flexibility of the bamboo caused it to curve when walking. And to those who saw it from a distance, it seemed that the body was constantly jumping. That movement gave the impression that the body was moving, and the relatives thought that something had gone wrong in the ritual. They didn't distrust the priests, but believed that a malicious force had stood in the way of their loved one's return. Thus, rumors began to be heard that the bodies had been possessed by spirits instead of their original soul turning into demons. The rumor that the dead became evil entities is spread throughout a large part of Chinese territory, ensuring its terrifying appearance and its extreme paleness. The appearance they described, his paleness, long nails, and sharp teeth, matched the description of the famous vampires of Eastern Europe, hence their definition as Chinese vampires. In other writings, it is said that when a corpse was suspected of having mutated into a Jiangxi, a Taoist priest would seal the coffin with ink thread in the morning and leave it in a place with sufficient sunlight. If the coffin was damaged, a large amount of glutinous rice was poured on the broken area, and then the coffin was sealed with ink thread. The ink was made of imperial ink, a liquid mixed with coxcomb blood and cinnabar, poured into a cotton thread to make the Ziyang line. Because it is a tool used by craftsmen for measuring, it also symbolized the justice of heaven and earth. After that, the coffin was broken, creating cracks in the direction of the sun and the wind, and a large amount of glutinous rice was poured into it. It was waited until shortly before noon, when the key was most abundant and the coffin was opened. If any abnormality was observed on the body, it would be dragged and exposed to the sun. Taoist priests placed talismans and especially treated glutinous rice in the ears, nostrils, and throat of the corpse, and finally poured oil on it and set it on fire. We can't forget that today is a scary Tuesday, and we can't say goodbye without leaving you with a terrifying story. So let's get started. The village of King Long in Yunnan province was shrouded in dense fog for much of the year. Its inhabitants lived peacefully and respectfully with ancestral traditions, but at dusk, the atmosphere changed. The village held a dark secret, one they had kept for centuries, the presence of a Jiangxi. It was said that, years ago, a warrior named Li Chen had died in a nearby war and had been buried in a corner of the local cemetery. His family, not knowing that he had been mortally wounded in battle, or where he was, hadn't performed the proper funeral rituals. And his soul, tormented by the lack of peace and death, had returned like a Chinese vampire. Silence reigned in King Long as night fell. The inhabitants knew that any noise could attract the attention of that being. His somersaults echoed along the dark streets as he hunted for life energy. The amulets had become the neighbor's only line of defense. One day, a young man named Zhang came to the village in search of answers about his past. He had been born there, but had left as a child after the death of his parents. Years later, he returned with the hope of learning more about his childhood. Since his arrival, the young man noticed a mysterious atmosphere. The inhabitants seemed fearful and avoided answering his questions. Intrigued, he began to investigate. The village elders, after much insistence, shared with him the legend of the Jiangxi. For weeks, he investigated tirelessly, gathering information from villagers and exploring the cemetery. One night, while inspecting Li Chen's grave, he noticed a strange mark in the dirt near the grave. It looked like a pattern of stripes and circles, but he couldn't understand its meaning. The next morning, he returned to the cemetery armed with a shovel and a brush. He began to dig the ground around that strange mark and found an ancient book. It was very dilapidated, but it seemed to be some kind of manual used by the Taoists to control the Jiangxi in the village centuries ago. The texts spoke of an ancient ritual that could free those undead, 
and give them eternal rest. Determined to put an end to the Jiangxi thread, Zhang began studying the text and preparing for the ritual. He knew he couldn't do it alone, so he sought help from the village elders. Together, they prepared for the ceremony that would end the curse. That night, the town was silent. Zhang and the elders gathered at the cemetery, candles lit and amulets in hand. They began to recite the ancient incantations and perform the gestures described in the texts. The wind blew chilly as the ritual progressed. The tension in the air was palpable, and Zhang could feel the presence of the Jiangxi approaching. The inhuman jumps became increasingly audible, resounding like drums of war. Suddenly, the spirit emerged from the shadows. His pale, decomposed skin shone under the moonlight. Its long, twisted hair waved as it approached, and its sharp teeth glinted like blades. His lifeless eyes stared hungrily at Zhang and the elders. The battle began with a roar. The Jiangxi leapt towards the young man, his sharp claws ready to tear flesh. Zhang deftly dodged the attack and threw a protective amulet towards the creature's face, which vanished like a cloud of smoke. But the Jiangxi didn't stop. He continued to jump and attack ferociously, his movements so fast that they could barely follow. Zhang and the elders fought bravely, throwing amulets, reciting spells, but the Jiangxi was relentless. Li Chen, the warrior who had returned from the dead to turn into that terrible creature, was taking control of the situation. The elders were exhausted and injured, but they refused to give up. They knew that if they didn't stop him, the village would remain doomed. Finally, with a last desperate effort, Zhang approached Li Chen's grave. He performed a ritual to try to lock the warrior back in his tomb. The earth shook with fury and the Jiangxi screamed in agony as he was dragged back to the grave. Silence fell over the cemetery as the clouds dissipated, revealing a desolate landscape. They had triumphed, or so they believed. Suddenly the fog thickened again, enveloping them in even deeper darkness. The villagers who lived near the cemetery watched with fear as the shadows seemed to take on a life of their own. Suddenly the ground beneath them shook violently. A skeletal hand emerged from the ground, grabbing Zhang by the ankle. It was the Jiangxi who had not given up. His empty eyes burned with insatiable hunger as he pulled at the young man. The elders tried to help him, but the Jiangxi charged at them ferociously, throwing them away. Zhang struggled desperately as the Jiangxi dragged him towards his open grave. His sharp fingers dug into the young man's flesh as he screamed in agony. The moon shone down on them, illuminating the horrible scene. A terrifying scream echoed throughout the village. The earth shook once again and this time it wasn't the Jiangxi that emerged, but a horde of undead ancient Chinese warriors who had been awakened by the failed attempt to take down Li Chen. The elders and Zhang tried to fight the tide of that species of zombies, but they were overwhelmed. Villagers who hadn't participated in the ritual watched in terror from their homes as the village turned into a battlefield. Screams filled the air, and the fog turned so red with the spilled blood. As the chaos spread, Zhang realized that his attempt to stop the curse had triggered an even worse nightmare. The village of King Long was doomed. The undead devastated everything in their path, absorbing the life energy of the inhabitants. The fog would never dissipate, and the village would fall into oblivion. Lost forever in the abyss of death and horror, the village of King Long had fallen into the clutches of darkness, and no living soul would ever venture into that cursed place again. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode.